Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton. So we're back with episode 5 of our React.js tutorial, and we're going to go over conditional rendering. So what exactly is conditional rendering? Well, think of it like this. Let's say if I only wanted to render certain elements or even components based on some kind of condition. So maybe I might only want to render all the users if there are more than five elements inside this users array. So if we have more than five uh, user objects to display, same thing with posts, or maybe I might only want to display this component at a certain time during the day. So conditional rendering basically allows us to control what is being displayed on the DOM programmatically based on some truth value. Okay, so I'll show you an example. So let's just say right over here, let's just delete these two from our function app. And there are multiple ways that you can handle conditional rendering. So the easiest thing that you could do is use a ternary operator. So first we need to wrap this inside a pair of curly braces. And the next thing that we have to do is we need to specify a condition. So our condition is going to be users dot length. And we want to check to see if it's greater than four. So if it's greater than four, then what we're going to do is we're going to render users component. And if it's not greater than four, then we're just not going to render anything. So the basic syntax of this is pretty simple. You have your condition, right? This is equivalent to doing something like if users dot length greater than four. And what you want to do next is with the turning operator, you want to use a question mark. And right after the question mark, the value that goes after it should be the value that is returned whenever users.length greater than four is true. So for example, if users.length is greater than four, then we want to render users component. So I'm going to say users component. However, if it's not greater than four, we're going to just return null. Okay, so if this condition is true, it's going to return this value. If it's false, it's going to return this value. So it goes on to the other side of this colon right over here. So this is the general syntax of ternary operators. Okay, so now if I save, and if I go to my React app, you're gonna see that there's nothing here. Now, what if I actually added another user object? So let's go ahead and add one more, and let's just change the name to Mike. And then now you can see, all of our data is being rendered because our condition is true. Users.length is greater than four. So it's going to render users component. Obviously, we're not really seeing much with this null part. So instead, what I'll do is if this is false, then what I'll do is I'll just return a user object and I'll just pass in some properties. So for name, we'll pass in Jess, language, Haskell, and then job, data scientist. Let me just tidy this up a little bit because it looks pretty ugly. So... There we go. Looks a lot better now. Okay, so basically right now it's still going to render users component because this condition users.length grand is still true, as you can see right over here. Now if I actually remove this element from the array, you're gonna see that it only renders one component just and that's because we are returning this component to be rendered so it really depends on what it is that you want to do with your application obviously i could have just left that as null or i could have just returned some kind of component that indicates that there's not enough data or something it really depends so a good example would be let's say if you're fetching a database and there's no data then you would probably want to return some kind of component or just some jsx element that says there are no users found or there's not enough data found all right, now there are multiple ways that we can handle conditional rendering. We can also use if else statements or if else if statements. So we can't do them inside the return statement. So we can actually do them outside of it and provide multiple return themes. So I'll show an example. So let's just do the same condition. So if users length is greater than four, then we will return. And this time we will wrap this inside of a div and we'll use the same CSS. So app and I'll just interpolate users component. Now if I save, you can see that nothing is being rendered and let's just open up the const to make sure that there's nothing going on over here. All right, so now let's actually add another element into our users array and let's just change the name to Jess and let's change the ID to four. And you're gonna see that now our element is being rendered. Now let's fix this part up. Let's get rid of this return. So let's say else, so if users.length is not greater than four, then all we're gonna do is just return an h1 that says, sorry, not enough users. Okay, so right now that's not the case because you can see that our condition is true. So it's gonna return this JSX element. Now, if I were to go over here and let's get rid of this element, you can see it says, sorry, not enough users. Okay, so that's another way that you can use conditional statements. 
Another thing that you could do if you want to make it a little bit neater is you can create a function that can return a JSX element. So I can basically wrap all this stuff inside another function. So function conditional render, not the best name, but I could put this inside here. And then what I could do is I can return conditional render pretty much like this. So now, obviously, if I were to get rid of this element, you can see that it says, sorry, not enough users. If I see it back, it's going to display it. And it works the same way in class-based components too. So let's go inside user.js and I'll show you guys one more example. So let's just return this JSX element only if the language is equal to JavaScript. So since we're inside this render method, we can actually just get rid of this part. And then we can return this dot state dot language because remember the language property belongs to the state if you guys are not familiar with props i would suggest you guys watch my video on props so we're going to check to see if this is equal to javascript and if it is then we want to return that whole jsx element right over here and if it's not we're going to return a null so let's actually see what happens when we render our app you're going to see that there's actually going to be only one user component that's being rendered. We're only displaying all of the users that have the language as JavaScript. So if I were to change some of these languages to JavaScript, you're gonna see now they're being displayed. And if the language is not JavaScript, then we're just going to return a null, okay? So that's just another example of conditional rendering. And of course we could have also used an if condition. So to translate this into an if condition would be very straightforward. So I could just return this JSX element, and then we can return null if this condition is false. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video will help you guys out with conditional rendering and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.